Hello, and welcome to Because You Asked. I'm Barry Newsbaum. Today's question comes from ATP followers across the country, a lot of them, who are asking, what does the abortion decision by the Supreme Court mean? First, here's what happened. The Supreme Court last week overturned its landmark Roe v. Wade decision, ending constitutional protection for abortion. The historic decision returns regulation of the procedure to the states, many of which have already amended their laws in recent months in anticipation of this decision. Justice Samuel Alito delivered the majority opinion for five justices over dissents from the liberal trio. Chief Justice John Roberts wrote a separate opinion, declining to overturn Roe, but advancing new restrictions on abortion. Here's how the majority of the court summarized their decision. Quote, abortion presents a profound moral question. The Constitution does not prohibit the citizens of each state from regulating or prohibiting abortion. Roe and Casey cases arrogated that authority. We now overrule those decisions and return the authority to the people and their elected representatives, i.e. the states. So in a nutshell, abortion is no longer a federally protected procedure. The decision to have it legal or illegal or somewhere in between, subject to numerous restrictions on a state-by-state basis, has now returned to the 50 states. And there, the elected officials will decide hopefully based on the will of the state's people. The court's decision is the end of one of the most extraordinary cases in the court's history. The ruling appears to closely track a draft majority opinion that was leaked from the court in May, an unprecedented and once unthinkable breach of court custom. The ensuing week since then saw a rise in threats against members of the court and Get this, the attempted assassination of Justice Brett Kavanaugh, thought to hold the swing vote in the case. Left-wing groups behind demonstrations at the home of several justices after the leak vowed to foment a, quote, night of rage, unquote, following the court's decision. Those threats track a Homeland Security Department warning about targeted violence against justices, clergy, and healthcare providers. This all happened after the leak, of a draft of the majority opinion in the case. A gunman was actually arrested at Kavanaugh's home in June. There have been almost 50 instances of violence, vandalism, or intimidation at pro-life clinics and houses of worship. Some illegal acts have targeted the court itself. The radical progressive group, hashtag shutdown DC, blocked the court's vehicle entrances for several hours on June 13th, hoping to keep personnel from the building and, quote, expand the current political crisis, unquote. And all of this violence was before the decision was announced. So now the states will decide. What will they do now that they have the absolute authority on a state-by-state basis to decide abortion legalities or illegalities? The decision immediately affects the legal status of abortion across the country. 13 states have trigger bans in place, which will take effect in a matter of days or weeks. The largest of those states is Texas, where legal abortions declined by as much as 50% following enactment of a fetal heartbeat law last year. Another 13 states have pre-row bans on abortion that were never taken off the books or restrictions on the procedure following a certain gestational age. Here are the highlights. 22 states have laws that could be used to restrict the legal status of abortion. Seven states retain unenforced pre-Roe abortion bans. 13 states have post-Roe laws to enact all abortions might be illegal if Roe were overturned, which now happened. Nine states have unconstitutional post-Roe restrictions that were blocked by courts, but may be back in effect now that the court has ruled. Seven states have laws that express the intent to restrict the right to legal abortion to the maximum extent permitted by the U.S. Supreme Court. (sighs) There's more. Four states have passed a constitutional amendment explicitly declaring their constitution does not secure or protect any rights to abortion or allow use of public funds for abortion. Sixteen states and the District of Columbia have laws that protect the right to abortion. 
Four states and the District of Columbia have codified the right to abortion throughout pregnancy. Without state interference, 12 states explicitly permit abortion prior to viability or when necessary to protect the life or health of the pregnant person. A majority of the states, 26 in total, urged the United States Supreme Court justices to overturn Roe in amicus briefs filed before the case was decided. So why did the court make this decision? Well, Justice Samuel Alito wrote the majority opinion. Here are a few of his comments. It's over 200 pages and you don't want to listen to all of that. Here's his explanation in part. Number one, Roe relied on erroneous historical narrative. Roe found that the Constitution implicitly conferred a right to obtain an abortion, but it failed to ground the decision in text, history, or precedent. It relied on an erroneous historical narrative. It devoted great attention to and presumably relied on matters that have no bearing on the meaning of the Constitution. It disregarded fundamental differences between the precedents on which it relied and the question before the court. It concocted an elaborate set of rules with different restrictions for each trimester of pregnancy, but it did not explain how this veritable code could be, well, teased out of anything in the United States Constitution, the history of abortion laws, prior precedent, or any other cited source. And it's most important rule that states cannot protect fetal life prior to viability was never raised by any opinion of the court. And it is never plausibly explained. That's his first reason. Here's number two. The court not allowed to impose its own theory of life on the nation. Our opinion is not based on any view about if and when prenatal life is entitled to any of the rights enjoyed after birth. The dissent, by contrast, would impose on the people a particular theory about the rights of personhood when it begins. According to the dissent, The Constitution requires the states to regard a fetus as lacking even the most basic human right to live, at least until an arbitrary point in a pregnancy has been passed. Nothing in the Constitution or in our nation's legal traditions authorizes the court to adopt that theory of life. Number three, the Constitution protects certain rights not mentioned in the text, provided they're deeply rooted in the tradition of the nation but there's no such tradition respecting abortion. The majority said Alito's opinion includes a thorough survey of English, founding era, and 19th century laws and found that prohibiting abortion on pain of criminal punishment persisted from the earliest days of the common law until 1973. That was the year Roe was decided. The history they surveyed demonstrates abortion is not among the unenumerated rights the Constitution protects. You following me? Here's number four. Alito continues on the confusion over what the 14th Amendment protects. Quote, in interpreting what is meant by the 14th Amendment's reference to liberty, we must guard against the natural human tendency to confuse what that amendment protects with our own ardent views about the liberty that Americans should enjoy. That is why the court has long been reluctant to recognize rights that are not mentioned in the Constitution. The opinion concludes with this, quote, abortion presents a profound moral question. The Constitution does not prohibit the citizens of each state from regulating or prohibiting abortion. Roe and the Casey case arrogated that authority. We now overrule those decisions and return the authority to the people and their elected representatives. You with me? They didn't ban abortion. They sent it back to the states. Some people on the left are furious that the SCOTUS grants expansion of federal gun rights, but withdraws abortion rights. However, there's a big difference. Members of the court's current conservative majority laid out their thinking in this week's decision. They have been quite consistent, actually, sticking to the words of the country's founders in the 18th century and the precedent since then of our history that reach back even further. In both decisions, the majority makes the case that if a right is spelled out in the Constitution, the bar for any government regulation of that right is extremely high. In other words, if it's in the Constitution, you can't screw with it. 
But if the right is not explicit in the Constitution, state and federal governments have greater leeway to impose regulations. In other words, there is an explicit right to bear arms, the Second Amendment, but there's no such right to abortion. So how are people reacting since the decision? Everything from joy on the pro-life side to outright insanity by the pro-choice crowd. Some quotes from this week are, well, from American singer and actress Barbara Streisand, who said on Friday that the Supreme Court, quote, is the American Taliban. Seriously. Streisand, who starred in many movies, said following the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe, that the court used, quote, religious dogma to overturn the constitutional right to abortion. There is no constitutional right to abortion. She said the religious dogma to overturn constitutional rights is the American Taliban. Maxine Waters, Congresswoman, declared to hell with the Supreme Court after justices ruled to eliminate federal level abortion protections, overturning a 50 year precedent. Quote, you ain't seen nothing yet. Women are going to control their bodies no matter how they try to stop us. The hell with the Supreme Court. We will defy them. That's from Maxine Waters. <laughs> News commentator Sean Hannity said, now despite the hysteria on the left, the Supreme Court ruling was a momentous decision that returns abortion law back to the states where it belongs, as it is not enumerated in the Constitution like the right to keep and bear arms. Now, some states with the most liberal abortion laws, according to Hannity, even allowing third trimester abortions, look at the map, they will continue to, to allow them. And then this happened. Arizona's Department of Public Safety deployed tear gas and flashbang grenades as thousands of pro-choice demonstrators who gathered on Friday to protest against the Supreme Court decision, obviously, that overturned Roe. The temperature was uh, in the hundreds and 5,000 people showed up flooding into the streets around the Arizona State Capitol building. Their anger was palatable as they pounded on the glass and tried to break into the building. Senator Kelly Townsend said on Twitter, lawmakers were being held hostage inside the Senate building due to members of the public trying to breach our security. We smell tear gas and the children of one of the members are in the office sobbing with fear, she added. I think I've answered the question what the decision means, but the true extent of its ramifications will profoundly change America in ways we don't even understand yet. What do you think about the SCOTUS decision? Drop us a note in ATP and let us know on our website, americantruthproject.org or findberry.com. It'll take you right to the website. We want to know what you think. Thank you, ATP followers, for this great question. We've had a lot of them. We encourage your questions to us at ATP. The top question gets answered on a regular basis. We're happy to answer your inquiries to us simply because you ask. I'm very new spot.